Hi guys, it's uh, Uncle Earl here, just uh, bringing you another video. Now, uh, in this particular one, I'm going to be discussing uh, my thoughts on Bioshock 1 and 2. And this is just uh, it's a gameplay from Bioshock 2. I uh, finished it uh, today, and I finished Bioshock the other day. Um, now, the I suppose the fir very first thing was is I hadn't played... I wasn't uh, one of those people that played Bioshock when it came out, or Bioshock 2 for that matter, or any of the Bioshocks um, for that. Um, so, just uh, my first uh, thing I wanted to do was to play through Bioshock and Bioshock 2, so that way I could play through Bioshock Infinite, seeing as everyone says it's such a great game. Um, now, I suppose, yeah, one of the first things I uh, that wanted me to play this was uh, most people they were they were playing uh, I suppose they, they had sort of uh, a certain opinion of Bioshock and Bioshock 2 is uh, the opinion was that Bioshock the first one was a great game and awesome game everyone loved it and then when Bioshock 2 came out they uh, didn't like it as much uh, as, as a matter of fact most people hated it but um, yeah so that was the opinion of other people um, that was in sort of the back of my mind when I was playing these games because I knew I just had to play it so that way um, I could uh, see what all the fuss was about. Um, yeah, so I managed to get a copy of Bioshock and Bioshock 2 off Steam uh, for pretty cheap over the over the holidays. Um, so yeah, um, first of all, playing Bioshock, um, it was a lot of fun. Um, it did feel a bit sort of, uh, I guess, uh, choppy at times I guess in terms of uh, the gameplay and sometimes the story but overall I mean obviously um, when you found out that Atlas was actually Fontaine and um, yeah went from there and you realized that you were being controlled the whole time when he was saying could you so kindly uh, do this and do that sort of thing which um, was a real real twist and sort of like as it happened you're just sitting there in your chair just realizing that the whole time he's been doing it and he's been he's been controlling you the entire time and you uh, killed Andrew Ryan who's actually sort of neither here nor there he was sort of neutral I guess you could say but um, yeah so that's uh, I did enjoy it um, yeah one thing was that um, the controls were a bit sort of like cause you had to switch between plasmids and uh, sort of weapons so that made it a bit sort of clunky at times trying to do that but overall it was uh, I definitely enjoyed it and it was a lot of fun um, and then when I yeah then I pretty much straight after like the next day I started playing Bioshock 2 and um, one thing I did like to do was hack, hack uh, machines and things like that one thing I definitely noticed was that hacking I did I did a lot of hacking in Bioshock 1 but I did it, uh, I guess, uh, pretty cautiously, mainly because, like, if you put uh, some of those pipes in the wrong spots, then, and you don't have the pipes to fix it sort of thing, then you're just stuck, and you'll either set off an alarm or hurt yourself. I think one time I actually killed myself, but yeah, um, yeah, so, the, yeah, like, hacking... I noticed hacking in Bioshock 2 is definitely a lot easier, uh, especially with the remote hack tool. Did a, um, a fair bit of remote hacking. A lot of uh, I didn't really use auto hacking as much as I did in Bioshock 1, uh, mainly because when you hit the, the bonus blue uh, markers when hacking, you get all the extra items, which I did a lot. One thing um, I never actually did it. Uh, I don't I don't know if it works in Bioshock 1. If you get an alarm, set off an alarm while hacking you can just uh, straight away start hacking again if you hack it fast enough then the uh, alarm will stop and you won't even have to worry about it which is one of the things I liked about Bioshock 2 I suppose one of the, the main mechanics of the game in Bioshock 2 that I liked over Bioshock 1 was the ability to have both plasmids and a weapon uh, equipped at the same time so that way you could be uh, sitting there firing and then uh, at the same time using your plasmids which made it a lot, uh, I think, a lot smoother in terms of gameplay. Um, and I suppose um, some of the people didn't like this, the storyline Bioshock uh, 2, mainly because obviously you're back at Rapture, uh, Andrew Ryan's dead, Fontaine's dead, and you got these uh, characters that 
I suppose it's 10, ten years, uh, I was sort of 1968 as opposed to 1960 when it's set. And you're some, uh, you're playing as a big daddy, which is what I thought would happen in the first one. You play as a big daddy, but you're just uh, some dude um, who uh, Fontaine got to come back to try and uh, fix it so that way um, you'd, uh, <coughs> so that way you could have Fontaine futuristics. But yeah, so um, one thing I also liked is uh, in Bioshock 2 is only having just the gene tonic section as opposed to having uh, engineer tonics and having uh, physical tonics and all the different kinds of tonics. You just have all the tonics in one spot. Um, I think one thing I noticed in Bioshock 1 is that you could have, you could carry quite a few med packs whereas in Bioshock 2 you're stuck with five for a while um, and I didn't bother getting the upgrade till towards the end so I only had six at the end. But um, yeah, and uh, one thing I uh, hated the wrench in uh, in uh, Bioshock One, mainly because uh, it just did crap all damage, and I'd always be stuck uh, most of the time because I kept running out of bullets in Bioshock One. I was always out of bullets and out of uh, out of Eve, so I'd just be sitting there whacking away. Luckily, um, whacking away with the wrench. Luckily, I had um, the uh, what should we call it? Um, luckily I had the ice sort of uh, ice tonic so that way whenever I hit someone they uh, have a chance of freezing so I just sit there and uh, it also gave me health when I was hitting them so that way I could just sit there and wail on them uh, while I'm getting health and it doesn't even matter if I'm getting shot that's one thing I liked about that um, one thing I found also in Bioshock 2 is I was using the, the uh, ice ice uh, plasmid a lot you know, in a combination with my drills so that way um, it was quite easy to take down enemies you just freeze them and charge up and smash them although obviously if you shatter them then you don't get any uh, anything dropped um, but yeah um, that was uh, I found that yeah, the gameplay in Bioshock 2 was a lot better than in Bioshock 1 it was a lot smoother um, I enjoyed both stories um, probably Bioshock 1 obviously had a better story, but you can't really put a similar twist in the second one because then it's, it's already been done, obviously. Um, <coughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, so I suppose the storyline um, in the first one, obviously, you come in, you're fresh to the game, sort of thing. You haven't played, um, obviously, in Bioshock 2, you've already played Bioshock 1, so you know what's going on sort of thing but in, and then you come in uh, Atlas is the first one you talk to first person and you're running around doing all these bidding until you realize uh, once you kill Ryan that uh, Atlas is actually Fontaine and you have to go and uh, kill Fontaine um, one the other thing is uh, I suppose little sisters and big daddies in uh, always found big daddies a lot tougher in Bioshock 1 than in Bioshock 2 mainly because in Bioshock 2 you are a big daddy but, uh, yeah, so in Bioshock 1, uh, once you'd, uh, I'd always, always rescue a little sister, I'd never harvest them. Um, yeah, but uh, obviously in Bioshock 1, all you had to do was kill the big daddy and then rescue the, the little sister. But in uh, Bioshock 2, you can sort of, uh, you can adopt them and run around with them, so that way you can harvest uh, Adam from bodies. Which I find as a as a cool extra feature, and I thought you had to harvest two bodies before you could uh, rescue a rescue a little sister. Until obviously I eventually realised that um, you can just walk up to a uh, a vent and rescue them straight away. Um, yeah, so I'd always always rescue them, never never harvest. Um, so that because eventually you get the the presence in both Bioshock and Bioshock Two. Um, so that way, once you get the presence, then you get uh, Adam for it anyway, so it's it's sort of evens out in the end anyway, as long as you can be patient, and that way you get the good ending. Always got the good ending in both. Um, always saved in Bioshock 2. I saved the uh, all of the uh, I guess enemies that you have a choice of killing or saving. Um, just because obviously I get an, you get an achievement. I'm playing this on on PC, so uh, Bioshock 2 is through. 
uh, games for Windows Live um, and Bioshock. Uh, I was playing through, st no, both playing through Steam, but I was playing through Steam, so I didn't have any achievements, um, which is kind of annoying. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was getting achievements in uh, in Bioshock 2 through the games for Windows Live, but the Steam also had achievements. It looked like they in the, were in the process of moving the, the achievements across, but. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's what was happening there. Um, yeah, so I suppose overall, after playing both of them, um, I see I see where people are coming from in terms of um, I suppose a lot of people had this image of Bioshock in their mind that when they first played it, it was just the bee's knees. It was just the best thing they've ever played, and that uh, what they're expecting for a sequel, sort of like the whole Duke Nukem Forever thing and and um, what I can only imagine for Half-Life 3 would be that uh, people have got these high expectations and once you have high expectations usually the only place once you get what you uh, are wanting um, doesn't always come to fruition and you've just got um, a good game nonetheless but it's not what you were expecting mainly because of your such high expectations which um, I didn't have any expectations in this because I, I just I just played them both in a row and I, I enjoyed both of them. I actually enjoyed Bioshock 2 more in terms of gameplay, but uh, I think, yeah, there's probably the story was a lot better in uh, Bioshock, the first one, and I'm um, yet to play Bioshock Infinite, and that's uh, the next one on my list, and so once I play that, probably do some more, um, more videos on that. Um, yeah, so... That's that's that for Bioshock and Bioshock 2. I feel that uh, they're both very good games, and um, yeah, there's there's not much. Uh, I suppose for Bioshock Infinite, I've heard that there's more weapons, more plasmas, that sort of thing, but there's no hacking. I've heard, um, which I thought was a bit strange. I always love hacking. Whenever I see a turret or uh, a camera or anything like that, I always hack it straight away. So that way, I have them on my side. Because they always uh, one thing that was annoying is the the big sisters. They uh, they would always get me at the most inconvenient times. And um, luckily, I'd always try and get to an area where uh, I'd already hacked a few bots and things like that, so they could distract them while I sit in the corner and just ice her and shoot her with uh, rockets and stuff. Yeah, I found that I used a lot more different weapons in Bioshock 2, whereas uh, in Bioshock 1 I was, oh, most of the time I was out of, out of ammo, but I'd use just mainly the machine gun and anti-personnel rounds. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, I've uh, finished both games. Both games are, are very good, and I can't wait to play Bioshock Infinite. Thanks for listening.